What's up, Ben? Hey, Dad. How you doing? I'm okay. Can I get your ear for a minute? You got it. Can I tug on your ear? Be gentle. You got a second, right? Yep. Listen, I'm wondering, uh, tomorrow night, I've set aside some special time for the uh -huh. two of us to have a, uh, maybe a, a, a private time. A dinner, perhaps? Uh, maybe a slight celebration of sorts? What, what, what exactly are we celebrating? You don't know? I'm, I'm looking at my calendar. I don't see anything in there. Think ten years back. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. that's From right. tomorrow. It's when your voice changed. No, Dad, it's, uh, it's the anniversary of your divorce and the breakup of our family. So but, tomorrow I'm thinking of planning a dinner, you know, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start today. Yeah. I'm going to start cooking a nice stew, and then I'm going to ruin it. Oh, is this sort of a symbol? Yeah, yeah. or I'll, maybe I'll make a nice uh, soup with all the fresh ingredients, very mm. organic, and then I'll ruin it. Hey, you are one sentimental kid. Yeah, well, I mean, it's just a thought. Do you want to do this at home, or you, would you rather go out? Well, I think it would be more, you know, symbolic if we do it at home, uh -huh. you know, sit at separate tables. I see what you mean. So, so you're on. It's a date. I appreciate it. I think it'll be fun, you know. We don't, uh, wait a minute, we do spend a lot of time together. Hey, Laura, right? What? Yeah, I'm a little early. How's it going? Fine. New earrings. I like your earrings. <sighs> hey, you know, uh, have you ever, uh, you, you, I mean, you model, right? Uh-huh. Can you sit down? All right. I'll just wait. Look, my sister just had a baby, Doc. Check it out. I just became an uncle. Cute. He's such a beautiful kid. I went to the store. You know, I want to get him a little present. He's six months old. So I got him a little blue sailor suit, you know, like kids wear, you know, with the shorts and the ribbon, a little blue sailor hat, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm paying for it at the counter, right? Right. Buddy behind the counter puts it in the box. She looked at me and she actually said to me, is this a gift? Now I'm going to wear it out. Yeah, I got a job interview in an hour, so hurry up before I make duty caca on my diaper, you freak of nature. You told her. I love kids so much, man. My little cousin Matthew is the cutest kid in the world. I took him out to lunch the other day. I said, Matthew, how old are you now? He goes, six. I go, if you could be any age, what age would you be? He goes, seven. I go, why only six or seven? He goes, it's the only ones I know. Sure. I go, what about eight or nine? He goes, what the hell's your problem? Oh, man, I'm getting old. I went to uh, try to buy a new needle for my record player. I might as well have said, excuse me, do you guys sell cannonballs? I'm fresh out of cannonballs for my cannon outside. Can you make it quick? The British are coming. The British are coming. Hmm. I love music, man. I used to go out with a girl who worked for a record company. That is the coolest job in the world. After our first date, she sent me a whole bunch of new CDs in the mail. Oh, great. Now I just have to take her out three more times in the next five years. When we, when we stopped last time, you, you were starting to tell me about your grandfather, about growing up with him. Yeah, my grandfather, on my mother's side. Right. Yeah. He was a nut. My grandfather actually raised me. We were best friends. We were very close. Mm -hmm. But you ever notice this? Sometimes, you know, when you live with older people, you, they kind of have a language all their own. You have to translate all the time. Yeah. I remember watching TV with my grandfather. He's like, put in that show I like. Oscar and Bunky. Starsky and Hutch? Yeah, that's the one. So it was two single guys living in a house together. He, I once made the mistake of letting my grandfather fix me up on a blind date. Right. You ever been on a blind date? Yes, I have. The worst night of my life. I get all dressed up. I pick this girl up. Heinous. That was her name, Heinous. I get to her building, right? She opens the door. I took one look. I did like a buckwheat, you know? I'm trying to be nice, make conversation. I'm like, so Heinous. Yeah. I was just admiring that infected fingernail. <laughs> She had this mole, you know, with hair growing out of it. It was like talking to me the whole time, you know. Whoopa! Whoopa! Hula! Don't, don't, don't. No, no. no. Stan, I'm not. I, I don't know if I, I, you know, first of all, I don't even know if I want it. Now is a good time. Go. Shh. Go, go, go. No. He's hey, receptive. Look. Hey, hi, hi, hi. Hey, hi. What's up? There's something. Nothing. Uh, Stanley just. Julie no, has something she really would like to impart. Go ahead. No, I don't. What I, is what is this all about? Oh, all right, all right, all right. Uh, a good friend of Julie's came to town, and uh, you know, you think there might be a little uh, little calca shows between the two of you. You might want to give her a buzz. What between the two of us? 
something, you know, a little uh, feeling, a little, uh, you know. Wait, 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 wait a second. First of all, let's start with the basics. Mm, yeah. What's her name? Her name's Beth. Beth. So what's, what's, what's she like? Hey, now you're talking. That's a spirit. Well, she's smart. Yeah. And she's cute. Mm -hmm. And she makes all her own clothes. Uh, yeah, I, I met her earlier today, and uh, she's great. She's, really? Oh, you know, yeah. I, mean, I gave you a terrific build-up, uh, so you're, uh, you know, you're, you're pre-approved, you know, if you hear what I'm saying. Well, that was nice of you, Stanley. Yeah. I, I also, I told, her, I told her your nickname was, uh, was uh, Scooch. Why would you do that? I, I, I panicked, you know, but uh, she liked it. <laughs> You're in. Hmm. She's, she's cute. Yeah. yeah she what she makes she... all her own clothes. Have we mentioned that? Yeah, a couple of times. Yeah. I've known her for a long time, and I, I guess I just was thinking, nice dinner somewhere? Does she, do, uh, does she wrestle? <laughs> Listen, I have some uh, some bad news. You know, the plans we made for tomorrow night, the uh, little celebration. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. Well, I'm afraid we're going to have to push that back to another night because I actually have a date tomorrow night. A date? Like, with a woman? Yeah. Get out. No, I'm serious. Get out. Serious, man. Move over, kittens. The cat man is back on the prowl, huh? Wow! Ben, ben, it is one date. Calm down. So who is she? Is it, is it Sarah from the bakery? No. Mm -hmm. Susan from... From Donuts, Donuts, Donuts? No. No? Andrea at the Pastry Palace? Ben, I don't know any of these women. I'm just making them up. <laughs> Dad, I just love bakeries. But, um, you know, she's a lawyer, makes her own clothes. Sounds wonderful, you know? Makes so, her own clothes? Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> what do you mean? It means that rather than, rather than purchasing them at an outlet or a store, she actually gets the fabric. That's a lie. It's a skill. What do you mean she makes her own clothes? Is that code for something else? No, it's just what it sounds like. She goes to the store, buys fabric, comes home and turns it into this wonderful garment, supposedly. What do you mean she goes to the store, buys fabric, comes home, turns it into a wonderful garment? Is that code for something? I guess it's code for something. <laughs> okay. So, so nobody does that. So what you're really saying is... Uh, Got a drinking problem. Gotcha. <laughs> I had a good day today. What is a good day for you? When I'm doing my laundry. Yeah. And I get that lint screen off in one piece. Right. Doesn't that feel good? I have to run and show my neighbor, look, look. Don't touch, it's very fragile. It's thick, I did towels today. I live next door. <sighs> so, you know, Thanksgiving, I... I don't think I can go home for it again this year. Last year was just too upsetting. Mm -hmm. uh, I just have too many upsetting memories. You know, my mom used to save everything from Thanksgiving for weeks. I mean, she threw out none of the food. I, mean, I remember she used to send me to school wearing a turkey carcass vest. It was so humiliating. Mm -hmm. She saves everything. My mother saves aluminum foil. She actually washes out aluminum foil and hangs it up to dry. Her, her laundry room looks like Darth Vader's house. Well, that's, you know, you can, that stuff you can save forever. You know, it was embarrassing. I was in school. All the other kids had lunch boxes. My sandwich was in a Pan Am airsick bag. Mm. It makes it tough to trade food with your friends. Anyway, he, he's a dad. My, my boyfriend's a dad. And he has uh, two kids. They're, they're half Swedish and half Norwegian. They're see-through. I have never seen blonder children in my life. Last time you were talking about how much you loved kids, being with kids. Um, I used to substitute teach, second grade. Yeah. These kids were horrible. That's a tough age. All that they're saying to me, Susan doesn't do it that way. Susan lets us play. Susan lets us chew gum. Susan's prettier than you. Oh, really? Well, Susan's dead. Ne 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 ne. Laura, I need your honest opinion on something. Mm hmm. Actually, on second thought, could you, sh you could sugarcoat it. What do you think of this sweater? I mean, is, is, this, is this good? Is this a fun look for me? Well, it's fun for me. Uh, better in or out? Oh, in. Definitely in. One more thing. Could you pick out a restaurant for me and, and uh, this woman to go to tonight? Someplace romantic. I mean, if somebody was going to ask you out... Please, Dr. Katz, no more. No, I, I just need a recommendation for a nice restaurant. No idea. Well, could you help... Could you look one up in the yellow pages? Could you help me find a good restaurant? 
Hmm. What are you doing? Calling my lawyer. Dr. Kaz, are you okay? Yeah, 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 I'm okay. I don't think I've ever seen you lying on the couch like that. Well, you know what, I'm just, uh, uh I'm just uh, trying to reflect on, on something here and... Does it help to do that? Well, when I, when I, when I'm on the couch, you know, I, I sort of get in the same mode that my patients hopefully get. Do you want me to sit in the chair and doodle a little and pretend to care? Yeah, thanks. Do you think that would help? My sister, who I love dearly, has a Doberman Pinscher, mm -hmm. right? I love dogs, you should know that, okay? But I hate her dog, because she snaps at me all the time, as mean as can be, right? Yeah. So now whenever my sister goes to work during the day, I call up her answer machine, leave the dog messages to make him crazy. Come on, boy, wanna go for a walk? Where's the leash? Come on, baby. Who's at the door? Go see who's at the door. <laughs> Sit. So, uh, Doc, you know, Every time I call up your office and, and uh, your, your receptionist, what's her name? Laura. You know, when she's not there, you're answering, what's with your message? Leave your name and number. Doc, does anybody not know what to do? Are people leaving other data instead? Hey, Doc, call me back right away. My address is 1535 Broadway. My favorite food is corn. How about this? You ever hear this one? Speak clearly after the tone. <laughs> <laughs> I used to let my grandfather, because uh, you know, we lived together, so I used to let him make the answer machine message. Mm -hmm. You ever hear an 80-year-old man make an answer machine message? How the hell is this thing beep? He played high school football, my grandfather, back in the days of leather helmets and no face masks. Remember those guys, Doc? Sure. He was so proud. He used to tell me these stories all the time, you know? I was starting fullback for the Newark Maulers. Couldn't afford uniforms back then. Used to shave our numbers into the hair on our backs. We were the toughest team in the league. Our motto was, mottos are for sissies. So, you know, it's just not gonna, just not gonna work out tonight because something came up at the last minute and my apologies to Beth, oh, my apologies yeah, to but you because you would, he would lay, lay the, John, uh, done a, the leg work. Wait, and, slow down a minute. And, uh, you know, I'm not. I'm not going to lie to it's you. Okay. Okay. It's so, okay. It's okay. It's okay. John, the, the truth of the matter is, I'm having surgery tomorrow, and that's John. Yes. It's it's okay. Okay. She, she, because you know, Beth. Just, not just a procedure that uh, you know that I wasn't anticipating. Are you really having surgery tomorrow? I'm having my bangs removed. Doctor Katz's office. Yes. Who am I speaking with? Hi, Ben. Hey. Who am I speaking with? Ben, what are you doing? It's a nice day, huh? Mm-hmm. Is it? I haven't looked yet. You know, I'm all, I'm curled up in a ball in the corner of the kitchen, crying. So I, I there was, there's no way for me to see what's, what's happening outside. Mm-hmm. Well, then I better let you go, then. But, you know, I've been thinking this thing through, Julie. Yeah. And what's the best thing that could happen? She lives in the Midwest, you know, I'm not... Well, it's, it's, you know, I'm just leading her on. This is not... You know, I think you should just take it easy, because yeah. Beth actually called. She, um, she can't make it. Wait Tonight doesn't really work for her. I guess. She can't make it, is what you're saying. Right. She can't make Something it. Something must have come up at the last minute. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I understand that. She wants to keep her options open, you know, play the field. I thought you said you couldn't make it, though. I mean, what, what do you want here? You want to well, go I, or you don't want to go? That's what I'm saying. I want to go. I don't want to go. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm torn. I'm conflicted. Okay. But, but uh, what? let me ask you this. What time did she tell you? She just called about five minutes ago. Oh, so technically I had already decided I... I didn't want to go through with it, so she didn't really blow me off. But I, will you give her my my uh, my apologies for canceling on such short notice? Yes. Listen, Laura, I have a, just a quick question for you. you. Would would you be at all interested in maybe uh, going out on a blind date with um, me? On a blind date? Yeah, a blind date with me. M O I me. Ben, how can I go on a blind date with you if I already know who you are? Um, because. Oh, okay. What if we just don't go out and get, we don't call it a date? But uh, we'll go out and get a couple of haircuts together. What do you say? I mean, we could sit next to each other in the barber chairs. We could talk to each other through the mirrors. And then, you know, that's, it's not an actual date, but 
And in the end, I'll pay. You tip. What do you say? No. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be leaving a little early today. You know, maybe if you if you need to leave early today, which is okay with me, maybe you could make up for that time by coming a little early tomorrow or staying late tomorrow, just so it sort of evens out by the end of the week you put in, you know, the 40-hour week that I pay you for. That's my only concern, but if you... Laura? Laura? <laughs> You know, Dad, uh, I have thought of a, a good way to, to meet women, though. How's that? For you. If you're having trouble. Yeah. Open an inn. Well, meeting women is not the issue. Yeah. You know, it's meeting them again. Can I, the truth, Ben, this to me is a much better evening than the one I had planned. You say that now because you're here, but... No, I actually am, I've been looking forward to this. What happened to the... I called it off because she lives in the Midwest. Yeah. I don't want to get involved with somebody who lives 2,000 miles away. You don't want a long-distance relationship. It's not relationship. fair. Well, Dad, you know, maybe, maybe you just, maybe you, you made too big a deal out of it. You know, it just could have been a date. That's you never, were thinking bringing up. No, nah, it's never that simple. You know, you, you I because mean, I know, I know the way my mind works and the way that my heart works. Mm -hmm. Essentially, the heart pumps blood to the head. I don't want this talk yeah. again. Okay, Dad. Yeah. Let's have a toast. A toast to you and Mom and and what could have been. I'll drink to that. Ben. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. To the pain, Dad. What pain? You know, the pain I felt in the pit of my stomach every day the first few years after you and Mom split up, huh? Oh, oh, that pain. Yeah. Then maybe we should slow down on the toast. Well, you don't you have know? to drink every time, Dad. You know, you can just do the toast, click the glasses, don't drink. I'll try that. All right. To you and Mom uh, splitting up. Cheers. Cheers. You could have not toasted to that. Dad, to the United States Navy. They do a hell of a job. Huh? I'll toast to the Navy. Cheers. To you and Mom, you gave it your best shot. Hmm? Well, that's that's beautiful, Ben. Thank you. And here's to you, a great son and a nice date. Uh, that's nice. Hey, is that your foot? So, I know this might come as a shock to you, but uh, I'm getting married this year. Hey, great. <laughs> I can't wait to tell him. you got to tell him, Kathy. And, you know, I'm, I'm Jewish, you know. Right. You know, a lot of people don't think it's a good idea to be in a mixed couple. But, you know, I, I think it's, it, you just have to love each other. I, yeah. I think that's what's important. That's true. You're right. Yeah. And, I mean, everybody has arguments. We, we do. We have our share. And they always start the same way, you know. I always say things like, well, we never go out anymore. And he always says things like, the Holocaust never happened. Mm. You know how couples pick. Yeah, I'd like to get married in St. Patrick's Cathedral, just to annoy my mother. I just want to see the look on her face when I eat that wafer. My father would be asking for seconds on the host. Mmm, this is good. What is this, host? Get some host when you go shopping next time. My dad's a CPA, and like every CPA I know, he's the most fastidious, meticulous, anal, retentive person. Yeah. Really, if you ever meet my dad and you want to torture him, this is what you do. You tie him against the wall like this, and then right in front of him, you refold a road map incorrectly. He just twitches a little bit and then he passes out. My aunt is always like uh, hawking me to go out with Jewish women, you know, and it's like every time she meets one of my girlfriends, she wants to know if she's Jewish, you know, but she, she doesn't want to just come out and ask me, you know? Right. She's like uh, more subtle. She's like, I didn't catch her last name, dear. Well, you know, Jeffrey, this is what old women like to do. They like to fix people up. Our friends in the building, the old ladies who live there, they're so adorable. Mm -hmm. You know, like our little card-playing buddies. They're always like, it's a harsh word, but it fits. They're always like pimping off their granddaughters on me, you know what I mean? You should meet my Angela. She's a law student and beautiful. I'm like, what do you mean beautiful? Describe her to me. Right. Well, she's not a hunchback. Mm. Sometimes they get desperate to give me the hard sell, you know? Oh, you should meet my Marie. Not much to look at, but she'll bop on your schmeckle, boy. Doc, I, I'm a kind of embarrassed. I, I wrote a love poem. Can I shot on you? Sure, go ahead. 
It's a poem about a guy who gets dumped by a girl and he just can't seem to get on with his life. Mm -hmm. It's called, either she screens her calls or she hasn't been home since 1985. Mm. <coughs> Hello, pick up the phone, I know you're home. I'll just call back later. What do you think? Whoops, you know what the music means. You hear music? I thought that was in my head. Oh, thank God. Jeez, that's awful. That is awful. Yeah, it's just a, it's a tragedy, you know, but at least, uh, you know, she lived 92 wonderful years. No, I know not all of them, but, but, uh, hey, nobody lives the, uh, the eulogy? Yeah, no, no, I would be glad to, uh, to do that for you, and, and please let us know if there's anything at all we can do. Yeah, we will be there, I promise you that. <sighs> okay. Thank, thank you for calling. Same goes for you. <laughs> <laughs> I died. Who died? I can oh, tell by the oh, God. by the hysterical laughter. Someone just, in our family just died. <laughs> I don't know why this happens every time. Yeah. I remember the last laughing oh. fit you had. Oh God, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, still. Oh, Stell died. Yeah. Who is she? <laughs> what are you talking about? Morty's wife. Who's Morty? Morty is my second cousin uh, once removed, or twice removed. Uh, that's know. too far away from me, Dad. I don't but, think I've uh, ever met Morty or Stell, have I? They used to come over Thanksgiving, Passover. Mm. Anyway. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, you so, seem so upset. <sighs> well, we were, we were close. Yeah. We were very close. Yeah. Very close to hysteria <laughs> there for a second. Why do you... Why do you laugh at somebody else's demise? I don't understand that. I mean, Just I do. Something, there's something about, I guess, you know, one minute they're alive, and the next minute they're dead, it's like slapstick. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I hope you're not upset. I mean, you look it. Well, I'm a, I'm a little, uh, I'm a little upset. <clears throat> I, you know, she was, when I was a kid, she was very, she was there for me. A yeah. lot, you know, when when uh, both of my parents were working, she yeah. very often would pick me up at school and bring me home. Right. And Morty is somebody I'm very fond of. You know, he was, Morty is a very uh, worldly guy, you know. Yeah. If that's what incontinent means uh, <laughs> anymore. But uh, there are services, there are services the day after tomorrow. Oh. You know, the Jews are uh are obliged to bury their dead within a certain time frame yeah, i know dad i'm jewish yeah yeah <laughs> i know the rules thanks for reminding I me i know but i remember you threw out the manual okay let me all right let me phrase it this way let's put it into the hypothetical okay let's say let's say dr katz was going to have a party and at this party he was allowed to invite one of his patients do you think that I would, there was any chance at all that I would be the one patient he would invite, or do you think that I would be in the top five patients he would invite, or do you think it would, do you think he would say something like, no, he's not coming, is that, we, he's not going to be there, which, which of those do you think would be? So, I haven't been, uh, I, I'm very frightened of doctors and Mm -hmm. Dentists and my sister went to this uh, acupuncturist, which was pretty cool. But um, he was a doctor, but he missed these signs that she had diabetes. I mean, she had all these signs. I mean, she was, uh, for example, she was craving insulin, mm -hmm. and then uh, she would collapse after eating a lifesaver. And still, the doctor still didn't get it at that point. Hmm. Tell me, tell me the whole thing again, Andy. I went out with this woman for two months, and then we didn't have any sex, and I asked mm -hmm. her, uh, why aren't we having any sex, which is always a good come-on line. 
And she said, I can't have any sex with you, Andy, because I'm impotent. And I said, impotent, don't you mean frigid? And she said, sure, whatever it takes. That too. Yes, is what she said. All righty then. I can't get enough of the women, though. I can't get any of the women. So I, I think you can see my process of elimination. I can't get any of them. When I was a kid, I hated musicals. Mm -hmm. I, I, I couldn't stand when I go to the theater and there'd be a musical. And I hated musicals when they, they tell you what they're going to do. Right. They always say, we're going to dance and sing and do everything. Well, then go ahead and dance and sing and do everything. It's like those rock groups in the early 60s. They would go, we want to rock and roll. Well, go ahead and rock and roll then. You've got the instruments and the amplifiers. Who better than you? Maybe I'm a little too upset about this, but it's starting to stick in my craw wherever that would be located in my body. That's right next to your druthers. I used to have an agent and a manager, and then I had a lawyer, and then I, I used to pay someone, some guy 2%. I would call him up, and he would say, it's not you, Andy, this business is screwed for 2%. And it was well worth it, is how I felt about it. Well, you're in a business, Andy, where representation is critical. You, know, you need to have people who have your interests at heart. But do you think it's a, a bad sign if you're talking to your lawyer and right in the middle of talking to him, your lawyer says, hey, hey look, I'm no legal expert. Is that good? Is that a bad sign? Not necessarily you know Dad, oh, yeah. it's, it's just that it's gonna be a little awkward for me because I haven't been to a, a funeral and yeah. like since I was 12 so well, I'm a little out of practice I'll cover for you because I've been to three funerals this year and, and I'm not a morning person well you know just go to bed early tonight and you'll be able to get up early tomorrow. It was a joke. It was a joke. Oh, you mean it was a bad yes, pun. Morning for, right. Puns aren't really good or bad. They're just, they're just puns. That's what they no. are. Oh, don't defend them, Dad. Maybe you're just not a punny person. <laughs> That's a bad pun. You're slapping in the face now. And pun, you're going to your room right now. <laughs> Punish me. Okay. Well, don't pun pontificate. Okay. Just pun. Pun. Tomorrow morning. Oh, me too. Well, I, I, I have to go to a funeral. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Katz. Yeah, well, thank you. Uh, it's it's going to be a tough one because, you know, this is, uh, this is my third funeral this year, and I'm, I'm not a mourning person. Is that a joke? Uh, yeah. Why, didn't it seem I don't seem think like... that's appropriate at Did a time it... like this. Do you think it's a bad joke or just an appropriate time for a joke? Both. You can only choose one. I'd have to go with bad joke. That hurts. Well, let's let's try and pick up where we left off last time, Margaret, because I, th I thought we were making some progress. Tell me about your about your family, about your siblings. Everyone in the family was fat. I used to have to hide in the bathroom to eat. Yeah. They'd all be at the door trying to get in to get my food. We just want to wash our faces. It was like the night of the living dead. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it was a very scary childhood. My mother has home movies you got to be 18 to get into. There's one of a barbecue. If you look real close, you can see Hitchcock sitting at a picnic table. Odd. Weren't you talking last time about your Uncle Joe? Oh, Uncle Joey. Yes. Jeez. Ate nothing but food additives. He was always real shiny like a sausage casing. Right. You just want to stick him with a fork. You knew a fennel seed would come flying out. Disgusting human being. Now Couldn't you... get a sentence out without, you know, belching. So, Mark, how you doing? Geez, you're looking good. Yeah, you too, Uncle Joey. Yeah, shiny guy. But it's good that you're getting out. You know, you're, you're seeing people, you're taking chances. Yeah, I went out to dinner with a Marine last weekend. Mm -hmm. He looked across the table at me and he goes, You know, I could kill you in seven seconds. I go, oh, well, I'll just have the toast then. 
I like him, though, because he fights. Yeah. You know, everywhere we go, he picks a big fist fight. I love fights. Really? Well, I don't like the actual fight. I like the loose change on the ground afterwards. But you find yourself drawn to the macho to the macho types, big, strong guys. I, said, I don't like hairy guys, so yeah. I went with a hairy guy. You'd get in the bathtub. It looked like the sewer backed up. Ooh. All that fur floating on that water made me want to snap a cigarette butt in there. Where do you meet these guys? I mean, I mean, do you do you go to bars? Bars. I hate bars because I don't drink or smoke. You know, guys coming up to me, hey, cupcake, can I buy you a drink? I'd always say no, but I'll take the three bucks. And then they want to know my name. I say Margaret, and they always go, ah, oh, what do you like to be called? Yeah, you know, like Margaret's a crummy name. I go, oh, just call me Bubbles. I'll give you a name, you little weasel. You know something? I I used to actually be very uncomfortable with the idea of being buried. Yeah. Uh, I thought I wanted to be cremated, but then when it, there's something very there's a certain kind of symmetry about you know about about regenerating life with the decaying of your body. That's disgusting, Dad. I'm not saying we should do it today. Right. Does he accept gifts? At all? Would it be inappropriate to find out when Dr. Cass's birthday is? And do you think sending a a, a present would be a pro an appropriate gesture? That's the kind of decision you will have to make about your father someday. You know? About what? How how you should be buried? Whether I should be buried or cremated or who knows by the time I die. I think you should make the choice, Dad, about the way you want to be buried. Well, I'm telling you now, I'd like to be buried nicely. <laughs> okay, well, I can't afford that. Yeah. <laughs> Remember when Uncle Phil died? Yeah. Yeah. That was great. <laughs> okay, when you're saying to me, get away from me, now are you talking to me as like a as like a patient, like this area is not for the patients? Or are you saying are you saying Andy Kindler, you, you get away from me? Katz's office. Hey, Laura. Hi, Ben. It's, uh, it's Ben. How you doing? Fine, how are you? Hanging in there? Good. Yeah. What? Good. Hanging in there, I said. Oh, I thought you meant you were hanging in there. Oh, no, 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 no. It's, it's an expression, like, uh, I would say hanging in there, and you'd say, yeah. You have to put more of a question mark at the end. Try oh, it again. Okay. Hanging in there? Yeah. Me too, me too. My mother came out to California. California's very nice, Andy. San Francisco was lovely. The hills I could have lived without, but the people were courteous and well-kempt. She gets off the plane, she's reading from the tour book. Andy, did you know San Francisco is the fifth largest textile manufacturer in the early 20th century? Andy, I would like to visit Sausalito. Can we go to Sausalito, a small fishing village north of the Golden Gate Bridge, nestled in lovely Marin County? Can we go to Sausalito? You know, actually, it's kind of a tough time for the Katz family. You know, I don't know if you've heard, but um, my aunt Estelle died. Oh, right. Were you very close to her? I didn't know her. I mean, I, I, my dad told me I met her a couple of times, but I don't, uh, I don't actually remember Mm. I think my dad was was kind of close. Is he overly upset today? Uh, not really. Well, he should be. I mean... He was trying to make a bad joke. Yeah. Well, the thing about this is I have to go to the funeral tomorrow, and I'm not uh, exactly a mourning person. <laughs> you know? Right. That was the one. The one what? The bad joke that he tried to make. Oh. Well, he told you that? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I wrote it. Right. He just tells him. The thing is, is, is that the the comedy boom is over. It's very depressing. And, and I mean, this is the field that I picked for my life, and it used to be mm -hmm. that everybody wanted a comic. In the mid-'80s, if you could say, how are you people doing? You could make like $100,000 a year. Well, but now you're, you're, uh, you're doing other things. You're branching out. You're writing comedy. I have, my whole trouble is I can't focus, you know? Like I'm supposed to you know, try and write a script or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I want to write a script, but then... I figure, you know, maybe I'll take a nap for a couple of hours, get things stirred up that way. Yeah. Then I start to write, and then I notice that uh, Newhart is on, Nick at Night. So how can you not watch Newhart? 
I have to. And then, you know, I'm, I'm start to write again, and I realize that Dragnet is very watchable when you're trying to avoid your obligations. Um, here's my impression of a network TV executive during World War II. Look, I don't like Hitler either, but he's very, very popular. He does very well. He has a lot of energy. He scores very well with the 18 to 49 men who hate Jews category. We're skewing it that way. They buy a lot of products. What do you want me to do? They buy the brown shirts. They enjoy the riding crops. Hey, when was the last time you bought a suit, Stanley? Uh, a couple, a couple of years ago. You know what size you are? Yeah. What size? Uh, 41 reg. 41 reg. See, the last time I bought a suit, I was a 38 short. And uh -huh. I went and I tried on a 38 short. And I could get one sleeve in, essentially. Mm. Oh. You know, I, I'm, I'm a little, I have a little more fullness. Yeah. Got a little heavier, I guess. It, uh, well, it's, it's, I filled out. Oh, well. I bulked up a little bit. I'm... You know, it's a good thing to do for that. What's that? Uh, it sounds outrageous, but yeah. go for like a higher number. Like instead of 38, go like to a, a, 40. a 40 or a 42. Well, or... This, is, this is what I was going to tell you is this woman who was selling me this suit, she kept saying to me, and, and, and she was belting it out in front of everybody, she said, well, the problem is, Mr. Katz, you're a portly gentleman. Oh. <sighs> Wow. A th if you want to wear a 38, you have to wear a 38 portly. Oh, is there really a portly size? Apparently, but I, no. I, I am not. Would you ever describe me no. as portly? No. No. Never. No. No. Never. No. 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 No, I'm not a portly mm. guy. No. no. So I said, stop it. You said that to her. I said, stop it. Good. Hmm. Good. I don't need that. Did She's she? She's probably projecting. Was she portly? No. She was, she was felt. Oh. oh. She was made no. out of felt. Maybe she Did was. Did I say felt? You know, no, sometimes was, when women get really smelt. aggressive, yeah. it's really that they're kind of like coming on to you. Sometimes some women do that. They get like really aggressive. Yeah. And then they're testing you to see if how like, far they can push you. Yeah, and see if you're if you like that, basically. If yeah. you like being bossed around. No wait, does it always mean that? Because women come on to me like that a lot. They're always, no, like, it always yelling mean at me. And, no. It doesn't always. It what doesn't about, always mean. What about when they ticket your car? Is that is that a? Uh, that's a come on. That's a oh, man. I fall for that every time. Salespeople, they hate their jobs. Yeah. I remember the last job I ever tried to get in the normal workforce. Guy told me I had to wear high heels. Right. I said, well, I'll wear the high heels, but I'm going to need a handicapped parking space. Mm-hmm. I like that one store that uh, mm -hmm. Ann Taylor, they're a little pushy there, though. Yeah. Get in there, they follow you around, rush me in and out of that dressing room. You know, I get in that dressing room, I like to stay a while. It's nicer than my apartment. So I'm in there like 10, 15 minutes. She comes knocking at the door. I go, what? Uh, you've been in there a while. Are you okay? I open the door, crack. I said, uh, no. Could you get me some toilet paper? What does she think I'm doing in there? Oops. Uh, Margaret, I'm sorry. You know what the music means. Our, we're going to have to stop now. Uh, I know our time's up, but... Nope. Uh, Gotta go. I think I got designs on you. Bye. What, what did you just say? I think I'm in love with you. Bye. Wait, 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 wait. This is some... I, I mean, I wish you had said this earlier. Well, then we would have had to talk about it. But we do We do need to talk about it. Well, okay. But, you know, we can't, we can't do it now because our time is up. But we have to talk about this issue next session. I think you should chip in half, though. Why is that? If we're talking about our relationship, isn't that a couple session? Uh... Well, technically, but it's really more about, about what we call transference in this business. Don't worry. I'm not going to stalk you or anything. Well, that's good. I, I, I mean, it never really crossed my, my address, my mind. Never, my, I never addressed that issue in, in my mind. But uh, I really, I, I have to get going now because I never go directly home. You know what I mean? I don't know why I'm telling you this. <laughs> So now what, what exactly are you going to say? I was going to ask you. I was, you know, I usually try to open with a joke. <laughs> but I don't think I'm going to today. No. 
I think I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk about Estelle, you know? Yeah, that would be a good person to talk about. <laughs> yeah, because it is her funeral. That's true. I got to acknowledge it somehow. Yeah, I would say touch on her. Hey, Ben, isn't that Cousin Sheila's husband, Larry? You remember him? That's the guy that used to put on the magic shows at the, at the family gatherings. Right. And he'd make me be his lovely assistant, you know? Yeah. I hope he doesn't try to saw the casket in <laughs> Dad, don't make us laugh. Okay. Well, that's not right. Not here. Oh, man. This is, a, this is a depressing event here. I don't care what anyone says. And I haven't even done my eulogy yet. Oh, I think, I think there's a... There are... Uh, uh, they asked me up to the... Yeah, you're going to have to go up, you know. I'll stay here. <clears throat> Unless you want me to be your lovely assistant. Nah, that's all right. All right, you go up. Knock him dead. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <clears throat> when, I, uh, when I first heard that Estelle had... Uh, <clears throat> when I first heard that Estelle had passed away... Can't hear him back! Ben, if you can't if you can't hear me, come a little closer. I'm sorry, folks. When I first uh... <laughs> no, I, th I thought of when I first heard that she had passed away. I thought of her life, and uh, you know, Estelle had 92 great years. And by my count, that's that's 92 great years. I'm sorry, I lost my place here. I remember. Uh, her love and her laughter. <laughs> and her love of laughter. <laughs> mayday, mayday. <clears throat> Estelle was a uh, was a remarkable woman. She, In her lifetime, she accomplished so much uh, and did so much for so many people in her 92 years. Which, if you break it down, <laughs> it's really... It's not that much considering how long she lived, but still, wrap it up. She, she did a lot... I know what the music means. Oh, Dad. I, I do. I thought for sure you were going to turn it around, but you didn't. <laughs> I, think I mean, I've never heard a eulogy before, but I think it's safe to say that that was the worst eulogy ever given. <laughs> At the after party, we're splitting up. That's all there is to it. <laughs>